At a recent summit, OpenAI CPO Kevin Weil shared an incredible real-world use case for their new O1 model. He claims the O1 model can now write legal briefs in minutes, which previously took $1,000 an hour associates hours to complete. It also does this at a fraction of the cost, significantly streamlining the whole process. Next, NVIDIA releases a new model called the Llama 3.1 Nemotron 70B Instruct. This is essentially a fine-tuned version of Llama 3.1 70B, using techniques like RLHF, reinforcement learning from human feedback, a customized reward model, and help helps tier 2. It outperforms state-of-the-art models like Claude 3.5 Sonnet and GPT-40 on certain benchmarks, even though it's significantly smaller. Lastly, Anthropic CEO Dario Amode recently published an amazing blog post titled Machines of Loving Grace, How AI Could Transform the World for the Better. In this blog post, he discusses in detail what he thinks AI will look like in the next 5-10 to 10 years, and gives us his timeline for AGI, or as he likes to call it, powerful AI. <laughs> So jumping right into it, I'm going to play you guys this clip of OpenAI's CPO Kevin Weil talking about their new O1 model and the insane ways it's being used right now to perform real-world tasks. Especially as the models get smarter, imagine we've heard examples of um, senior, uh, senior lawyers at law firms who said, you know, I just had O1 write a legal brief for me. That would have taken a $1,000 an hour associate six hours, and it did it in five minutes. It, what does it mean when you can suddenly do $8,000 of work in five minutes for like $3 of API credits? Um, so I don't think we know all the answers. Yeah. And also, like, part of our mission is to bring this to everybody. There are lots of places in the world, and we have a free product, and we, we always will. We believe in it deeply, and we really try and make AI cheaper and cheaper and cheaper so that we can offer more in that free product. But there are also going to be reasons that you want the, the $20 a month subscription, and there are a lot of people in the world that can't pay $20 a month. So how do we, uh, on the one end, sort of um, uh, share in the value that we create if we're, if we're taking something that used to cost $8,000 and doing it in five minutes for a small fraction of that, and also, try and bring AI to the rest of the world that may or may not be able to pay. I, like, it's an open question. So he asked a really good question there towards the end. Like, what is it going to mean when we have AI systems like OpenAI's O1 model available to a ton of people, allowing them to do thousands of dollars of work at a fraction of the cost and also much faster? Unfortunately, he doesn't really get into answering the question in this clip, but personally, I don't see how this doesn't completely revolutionize the labor market. I mean, we all know AI models get better with scale, and now with OpenAI's new O1 models, we're seeing the same pattern with train time compute, which means the longer you give these models to think, the better they perform. So if we fast forward a few years into the future when we have OpenAI's O3 or O4 models, we can expect even bigger leaps in performance than we saw with GPT-2 to GPT-3 and GPT-3 to GPT-4, because there is now both train time compute and test time compute being scaled up. All this to say, the fact that OpenAI's O1 model is already a significant leap forward for AI systems in general, especially in reasoning tasks, and the fact that it's already streamlining some real-world tasks like writing legal briefs, I think it's pretty clear that once again, this is going to completely change the labor market as we know it. Now, we're still somewhat early in AI adoption, but with the release of OpenAI's new O1 model and the recent rollout of Advanced Voice, we're starting to see a steep increase in ChatGPT users. As this article states, ChatGPT topped 3 billion visits in September. Here's a graph they've attached to put it into perspective how crazy this really is. In only two years, ChatGPT surpassed Bing, the second largest search engine worldwide, in monthly visits topping out at about 3.1 billion this month. So if we're seeing this much traffic on ChatGPT right now in its current state, imagine in let's say five years when the models are significantly better and can actually get things done for us in the real world reliably. I mean, literally everyone is going to be using it, and I know I keep saying this, but it's truly going to change everything. The ChatGPT app also just recently became available on Windows. You can now test an early version of the app on your desktop, making ChatGPT pretty much available everywhere. In the last piece of OpenAI news this week, we have former Palantir CISO Dane Stuckey joining OpenAI to lead security. This is new for OpenAI, usually we always hear about people leaving the company, but they made a great addition here for a change, and it's nice to see OpenAI taking security seriously. In other AI news, NVIDIA releases Llama 3.1 Nemotron 70B Instruct. Llama 3.1 Nemotron 70B Instruct is a large language model customized by NVIDIA to improve the helpfulness of LLM-generated responses to user queries. This model was trained using RLHF, specifically Reinforce, Llama 3.1 Nemotron 70B Reward, and helps tier 2 preference prompts on a Llama 3.1 70B Instruct model as the initial policy. So essentially what this means is NVIDIA fine-tuned Llama 
Formula 3.170B using a reward model and help steer 2, which helps align the model to become more helpful and factually correct. As a result, they saw a massive increase in performance on benchmarks, scoring 85 on Arena Hard, 57.6 on Alpaca Eval, and 8.98 on Empty Bench. These are higher scores than both Claude 3.5 Sonnet and GPT-40, and keep in mind this model is only 70 billion parameters. Now, benchmarks don't tell the whole story, and in fact, they conveniently decided to leave out its performance on other common benchmarks like the MMLU, but you can actually try the model out yourself right now, I'll leave a link to it in the description. This model released from NVIDIA points to a larger trend that's going on right now of companies releasing smaller and more powerful AI models. In a post from the Mistral AI team, it says, Introducing the world's best edge models. On the first anniversary of the release of Mistral 7B, the model that revolutionized independent frontier AI innovation for millions, we are proud to introduce two new state-of-the-art models for on-device computing and at-the-edge use cases. We call them Les Ministro, Ministral 3B and Ministral 8B. These models set a new frontier in knowledge, common sense, reasoning, function calling, and efficiency in the sub-10B category, and can be used or tuned to a variety of uses from orchestrating agentic workflows to creating specialist task workers. As we can see from the benchmarks, the light orange is Ministral 3B and the dark orange is Ministral 8B, and the 8B model is significantly outperforming Llama 3.1's 8B model, which is in the dark blue. So this model is clearly the new state-of-the-art for its size. Then if we take a look at availability and pricing, both of these models can be used right now, and I mean just look at that price. 10 cents per million tokens for the 8B model, and 4 cents per million tokens for the 3B model. This is the benefit of creating smaller models, they're extremely cheap and can be ran locally on your phone or laptop, and they're also getting much, much better. Here's another one, it states, Tiny open source image model Masonic offers impressive image quality for its size. And further, a new open source AI model called Masonic can generate high quality images using only a billion parameters. This compact size can enable local text to image applications, especially on mobile devices. Here are some examples of the images it generated from text. These are not the greatest AI images we've ever seen, but again, this is a 1 billion parameter model that can be locally ran on your device, which I don't think people truly understand how remarkable that is. Now, on the topic of new AI models, Archetype AI introduces Newton. Researchers at Archetype AI have developed a foundational AI model capable of learning complex physics principles directly from sensor data without any pre-programmed knowledge. This breakthrough can significantly change how we understand and interact with the physical world. The model, named Newton, demonstrates an unprecedented ability to generalize across diverse physical phenomena, from mechanical oscillations to thermodynamics using only raw sensor measurements as input. So this is pretty crazy, and they go into more detail here. It says, trained on over half a billion data points from diverse sensor measurements, Newton has shown remarkable versatility. In one striking demonstration, it accurately predicted the chaotic motion of a pendulum in real time, despite never being trained on pendulum dynamics. The model's capabilities extend to complex real-world scenarios as well. Newton outperformed specialized AI systems in forecasting citywide power consumption patterns and predicting temperature fluctuations in power grid transformers. What's remarkable is that Newton had not been specifically trained to understand these experiments. It was encountering them for the first time and was still able to predict outcomes even for chaotic and complex behaviors. For the model to perform this well zero shot, meaning essentially on the first try, is pretty incredible. And it's only a matter of time until we see AI making breakthrough discoveries in physics. So with AI adoption rapidly increasing, as we briefly talked about earlier in this video, along with the rise of AI-generated content, which is taking over the internet as we speak, it's becoming harder to distinguish between what is AI and what is real. This is where WorldCoin comes in. Now renamed the world, the Sam Altman-backed crypto project designed to authenticate humans in the age of AI. If you aren't already familiar with this project, essentially the way it works is you find one of these orbs, scan your face, and now you have a unique world ID that verifies your humanness. Once you get this world ID, you also get some world coin along with it, which is a digital cryptocurrency that they plan on potentially using to distribute universal basic income in the future. Now, there's been a ton of controversy with this project, and for good reason. I mean, just the sheer amount of data this company will have is kind of alarming. But that's not stopping them. They've recently announced their plans to scale their network up to 1 billion humans. They're introducing a new orb device powered by NVIDIA's latest Jetson chipset, making it much faster, secure, and reliable. They've also streamlined the design using 30% fewer parts, making it cheaper and easier to build. Finally, they're putting them in even more countries and more places, with the option to even get one delivered to you on demand using an app called Rappi. So I could see the need for a technology like this, especially in the future, but I could also see some potential safety concerns that come along with it. I guess I'm kind of on the fence with this, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think of it. Do you support this project, or do you think this is a bad idea? Let's talk about it in the comments. Moving on, but before we get into Anthropic CEO Dario Amode's incredible blog post about the future of AI, there were a few more stories in the AI industry that I have to talk about. Starting off with the AI robotics industry, we have some new upgrades to Tesla's Optimus. This comes after Tesla's CyberCab unveiling, where they also showed off some of Optimus's new skills, but they didn't go into too much detail.
detail until now. So this guy on Twitter, Sawyer Merit, gave us a great breakdown of all the new upgrades, and I'll go through them as we watch parts of this clip. First off, the Tesla Optimus robot can now explore unseen spaces autonomously, avoiding humans and objects in real time. This gives it the ability to adapt to essentially any environment, and what's cool about this is you can have multiple Tesla bots sharing this information with each other to create a better understanding of their surroundings. The Tesla bot can now also locate and navigate itself to the nearest charging station and plug itself in using its rear cameras. Optimus can carry more weight now as well, such as a 25 pound battery pack as we can see in this clip. It can also walk upstairs, which is obviously extremely important, and it's much better at interacting with humans, being able to hand you items upon verbal request. So these are some pretty massive improvements. With the speed at which Tesla is going at here, I honestly wouldn't be surprised that these bots are inside people's homes by the end of the decade. Another company in this industry, Boston Dynamics, who has been pretty quiet recently, just announced a partnership with Toyota Research Institute to advance robotics research. Boston Dynamics and Toyota Research Institute announced today they will join forces, combining two of the world's leaders in artificial intelligence and robotics. The research partnership aims to accelerate the development of general-purpose humanoid robots utilizing TRI's large behavior models and Boston Dynamics' Atlas robot. This is a partnership I'm going to be keeping a close eye on. We already know how incredible the work they've been doing at Boston Dynamics is, and they've had a huge head start over Tesla and really everyone in the AI robotics space, so I'm excited to see what they come out with next. Now, the last story before we get into Dario Amode's blog post, Google DeepMind has added some new features to Notebook LM. One of the main features in Notebook LM that went pretty viral is called Audio Overviews, and it gives you the ability to upload information and turn it into a podcast with AI hosts. They've expanded upon this feature, giving you the ability to guide the conversation. Now you can provide instructions before you generate a deep dive audio overview. For example, you can focus on specific topics or adjust the expertise level to suit your audience. Think of it like slipping the AI hosts a quick note right before they go on the air, which will change how they cover your material. They've also added background listening. You can also listen to audio overviews while continuing to work with Notebook LM. Query your sources, get citations, and explore relevant quotes without interrupting the audio. And lastly, they're introducing Notebook LM Business, which is still in its very early stages, but it's essentially just a way for businesses or universities to eventually be able to integrate these AI features directly into their workflows. So if you haven't already tried out Notebook LM, I highly recommend it. I was honestly surprised at how good the audio overviews feature is. It literally just sounds like two humans talking, and it really seems like the AIs grasp the context of what they're talking about. Finally, let's take a look at Dario Amode's Machines of Loving Grace. This is a really long blog post, and to be honest, I could have made an entire video just covering this post, but for time's sake, I've read the entire thing and will be giving you guys the main takeaways. So to preface this essay, here's a few sentences that gives you a good understanding of the perspective he's writing from. I think that most people are underestimating just how radical the upside of AI could be just as I think most people are underestimating how bad the risks could be. In this essay, I try to sketch out what that upside might look like, what a world with powerful AI might look like if everything goes right. Then he states his prediction for when AGI will arrive, or as he likes to call it, powerful AI. I think it could come as early as 2026, though there are also ways it could take much longer. But for the purposes of this essay, I like to put these issues aside, assume it will come reasonably soon, and focus on what happens in the 5-10 to 10 years after that. I also want to assume a definition of what such a system will look like. Then he talks about what these systems will look like. So, in terms of pure intelligence, it is smarter than a Nobel Prize winner across most relevant fields, biology, programming, math, engineering, writing, etc. In addition to just being a smart thing you could talk to, it has all the interfaces available to a human working virtually, including text, audio, video, mouse and keyboard control, and internet access. It can engage in any actions, communications, or remote operations enabled by this interface, including taking actions on the internet, taking or giving directions to humans, ordering materials, directing experiments, watching videos, making videos, and so on. It does all of these tasks with, again, a skill exceeding that of the most capable humans in the world. It does not just passively answer questions, instead it can be given given tasks that take hours, days, or weeks to complete, and then goes off and does those tasks autonomously in the way a smart employee would, asking for clarification as necessary. The resources used to train the model can be repurposed to run millions of instances of it. This matches projected cluster sizes by roughly 2027. And the model can absorb information and generate actions at roughly 10 times to 100 times human speed. Each of these million copies can act independently on unrelated tasks, or if needed, can all work together in the same way humans would collaborate, perhaps with different subpopulations fine-tuned to be a especially good at particular tasks. 
We could summarize this as a country of geniuses in a data center. Then he talks about in detail how this will affect different areas of science like biology, health, neuroscience, and mind, how it will affect the economy, basically stating that it will cure poverty, and ending it off with how it will affect government systems as well as the labor market and meaning. Now, even though this is essentially all speculation, it's still a really great read, and here's a paragraph that really summarizes everything. But it is a world worth fighting for. If all this really does happen over 5-10 to 10 years, the defeat of most diseases, the growth in biological and cognitive freedom, a renaissance of liberal democracy and human rights. I suspect everyone watching it will be surprised by the effect it has on them. I don't mean the experience of personally benefiting from all the new technologies, although that will certainly be amazing. I mean the experience of watching a long-held set of ideals materialize in front of us all at once. I think many people People will be literally moved to tears by it. So I think this is a good place to end it off. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like. And as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.